Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> I had a guy on the forums ask me if I could explain to him some of the differences between the uh, V1-5010 and the V2-5010. Um, as you can see, I have both here. This is my 2015-5010 and this is my 2018-5010. I actually bought the Solo when it was brand new back in, I think, 2013. Had it for a couple years. I really, really loved it. Then I thought I would like the Bronson better. So I sold that, ended up on a Bronson, and I realized I actually missed my uh, V1 a lot. So <laughs> ended up back in a, a V1. Doesn't say Solo on the top, but uh, it's the same color and everything. But yeah, so my 5010 build is kind of built up as a Brolo build, Bronson Solo build. It's got a 140 fox, uh, 140 um, millimeter sh rock shock suspension on the front. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of tricked it out with uh, carbon cranks and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's kind of built a little bit beefier than most of the uh, 5010s out there. And yeah, I I ended up going back to this bike because some of the trails that I ride at. Um, well, I generally ride in two locations. One location has sort of faster and flowier trails, and the other one is more slow and technical. And I realized I kind of missed the short wheelbase of the 5010 on some of that uh, technical slower stuff. And, you know, it's really great to, you know, I can get my weight really far back and go down steep, you know, rollers and, and things like that. So it's a really, really... Uh, a good bike for that even though it doesn't have the most travel and like a Bronson will have more travel but then again it, the Bronson's a little bit more slacked out so on some of that slower technical stuff it actually seems like some steeper angles are advantageous that's just me though so yeah um, so first difference between these two is that the, uh, the V2 is actually quite a bit longer um, it's one inch longer in wheelbase I believe and it's got a half inch longer um, top tube. Um, I think the bottom bracket is the same in the V2, but um, <clears throat> bottom bracket height that is. But basically, I think Santa Cruz wanted to follow the uh, the trend of going to a uh, longer, lower, and slacker, and you know that's what they did with these. Um, <clears throat> One thing that Santa Cruz used to be known for was their sizing, which um, I think that's kind of changed. I'm about 5'10", and this is large. And after riding this bike and other newer bikes, this bike definitely feels smaller. Um, you know, when I'm at top speed, I definitely don't feel as uh, stable as the, uh, the V2 5010. But... Um, <clears throat> Like both are great bikes. Um, it took me a while to get used to this um, this frame size right here because it, at first it felt really really long. I put a 40 millimeter stem on it to kind of shorten the cockpit a little bit, and I think it's finally starting to feel good. Um, this thing just rails at high speeds. Um, it's one of the top builds, so it's pretty. Uh, pretty lightweight and it pedals pretty awesome. It's got the 150 millimeter RockShox um, reverb dropper post on it, 1x12 and the carbon reserve wheels. Uh, keeping the fork at 130 on this because I kind of want this to be my kind of backcountry race bike. Um, I'll probably be riding this on a 70 mile um, endurance race later this year. A couple of years ago I rode at the same 70 mile. well I think they changed the course to 60 something miles now but um, I rode it on this bike and it was great. It's the perfect amount of travel, um, pedaled really well and it was an awesome sort of long endurance bike. I had a 29er Tallboy and I just realized that cross-country geometry I don't think it really has much advantages over trail geometry since uh, trail bikes seem to be getting lighter and uh, you're just more capable, better climbers overall, and they descend really well too. So I don't think you're really losing anything. But yeah, um, what else? Yeah, this used to come with a 70 millimeter stem stock, but I have a 60 millimeter stem on it. Um, I have a specialized uh, command post, which is 
it's 125 mil. Um, since the bike is a little bit shorter, I can get my weight back further. So I don't really need like a 150 mil dropper post on it. But I do have some i9 wheels on here, which are crazy loud. I love them. Not, not everybody does. You can hear me coming from a mile away, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, both are really great bikes. Um, you know, if you're on the edge of sizing, if you're 5'9", five, 5'10", five, ride the medium. I ended up riding a medium too, and it felt pretty good. But I realized, you know, at high speeds, I'm just more stable on this. And it still feels pretty nimble and flickable. Um, not as nimble as that one, but that's just what I prefer. I think Danny McCaskill, he's like my height, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and he rides a medium because he's, you know, he's hucking off roofs and stuff like that, and he needs to flick it around a little bit more. But yeah, I chose large. So um, just be wary of sizing because that's a lot of money you can lose getting buying a wrong uh, wrong size frame. I've definitely done that before and lost many nights of sleep wondering, did I get the right frame or not? But yeah, both are great bikes. Um, highly recommend them for anybody. They're both kind of do-it-all sort of uh, one quiver bikes. That's what I like about them because I can ride a lot of things with these bikes. Um, cross country, um, go off drops and you know, not worry about if I have enough bike. So yeah, that's basically it. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to put a comment below. Thank you.